There's a lot of different science out there, so let's start with the two major types of science. There are two major types of science. We have hypothesis-based and discovery-based. Hypothesis-based is what you've probably already learned before, but in my mind, discovery-based is a little underappreciated. So let's start there. Discovery-based science is when we observe the natural world without any preconceptions at all. And while hypotheses are really important, this is actually the precursor to all other science. Discovery-based science is simply going out there and asking, what's out there? Because if you don't know what exists, you can't make any informed hypotheses yet. So let's talk about an example. In the uh, 1600s, there was a man named Antony van Leeuwenhoek. And at this time, magnifying glasses existed and they were commonly in usage to inspect cloth. Because, you know, you want, especially if you're making um, high quality garments for the nobility, you really want to make sure that you keep your quality control there. Um, but he was a little bit more interested in these. And in 19, uh, 1691, he made a simple microscope. So he improved upon the magnifying lenses that were already out there. And he was able to magnify things to a greater degree than normal magnifying glasses. And he was just curious, like, what would something look like if I put it under this magnifying microscope? And he discovered the first microorganisms. Um, he was mostly looking at protists because those are slightly larger than other single-celled organisms such as bacteria, but he had no idea what was there. He was simply curious, what's this gonna look like if I put it under my microscope? So here are some of the first drawings by Lewin Hoek here. Um, and this knowledge transformed the life. Like before this existed, we really couldn't have the, um, an understanding for germ theory. And there's a whole lot of organisms that we now study because Leeuwen Hook let, um, gave us a clue about their existence. But of course, we also wanna talk about hypothesis-based science. This is where we discover reliable knowledge by actively manipulating our environment. And to do this, we have a distinct process. Um, th this XKCD comic here is one of my very favorites, um, where if you see a podium with a lever and if you pull it, it shocks you, a normal person would think, I'm not gonna do that. But a scientist will think, I wonder if that happens every time. But let's talk about this scientific method. You will see that the first step there is to observe. And that's one of the reasons why observational science is so important. But after you've made some observations, you're gonna to start to have some questions. And from that question, you can form a hypothesis. That hypothesis should lead you to a prediction, which you can test in your experiment. And after your experiment, you will have one of two options. Maybe your experiment supported your hypothesis. So you're probably gonna make another hypothesis. What can you predict next? Can you flesh out and get a bigger theory out from your uh, initial hypothesis? Or more commonly, it, you, your experiment did not support your hypothesis. You're gonna have to go back to the drawing board, make a new hypothesis. Maybe the world works slightly differently than you thought. You might notice here I'm using some specific language. I'm using support or does not support. We try to avoid the words right and wrong um, when we're talking about science because a different experiment that's a little slightly different, it might give you slightly different results. So let's look at an example. Um, there used to be a theory called spontaneous generation. And this was the idea that life just occurred spontaneously from inanimate matter. Um, and in 1665, Francesco, Francesco Reddy did an experiment because um, he wasn't entirely convinced of the idea of spontaneous generation. So he used fresh meat as bait. And if spontaneous generation was true, then you would expect maggots to appear regardless of the conditions. So let's look at what he did. Um, here, he had three different containers. So he had meat in a sealed container. Nothing can get in or out. His second one, um, the meat was covered, but there was gauze, so air could get in and out. You could smell it, um, but no, no big organisms that we can see with our eyes could get in or out. And then this third one, the flask is open. So we can see when it was completely sealed, no maggots appeared. And in the middle one, where it was covered with this gauze, 
we do see maggots, but they are not on our meat. So here we're seeing the flies were attracted by the smell of the rotting meat, um, and they laid their eggs, but they could only lay it on that gauze. And of course, in the open flask, we see the generation of maggots. So this was one of the um, experiments that helped disprove the idea of spontaneous generation, that life does not simply pop into existence from inanimate matter. So can you explain? What are the difference between discovery and hypothesis-based science?